Hello everyone. Today I'm going to tell you the summary of Discovering Tut. The saga continues. Written by A.R. Williams. Tut was the last heir of a powerful family that had ruled Egypt. He died as a teenager and was buried and with the passage of time altogether forgotten. But after the discovery of his tomb in 1922, the modern world wondered about the cause of his untimely death. He was brought out of his tomb and a CT scan was done to ascertain the reason of his death. This is what is there in this chapter. It was 6 p.m on 5th January 2005 when King Tut was taken out from his burial chamber after a span of 3,300 years. The weather was dusty and cloudy and was rather strange. The mummy was then put into a CT scanner to investigate the continuing uncertainty of the death of this young ruler who died an untimely death. Multitudes of tourists from around the world came to visit the tomb to pay their respects. They stared at the murals on the walls of the burial chamber and looked at Tut's gilded face on the lid of his mummy. The visitors were curious and thoughtful. Some feared the pharaoh's curse would befall those who disturbed them after his death. Zahi Hawaz, the Secretary General of Egypt's Supreme Council of Antiquities, said that the mummy was in very bad state because of the manner in which Howard Carter, the British archaeologist, in 1922 had discovered the tomb, had gone about investigating the contents of the tomb. He had then found the richest royal collection ever. There were the dazzling works of art and gold that had caused a sensation then and continue to draw people's attention even today. Everyday things such as board games, a bronze razor, linen undergarments, cases of food and wine had also been buried with the young pharaoh. Carter documented the pharaoh's treasures that were buried with him. He then began looking into his three nested coffins. In the first, he found that the burial cloth was decorated with garlands of willow and olive leaves, wild celery, lotus petals, and cornflowers. This helped him conclude that the king was buried in March or April. When he reached the mummy, he realized that the ritual reasons had solidified, cementing Tut to the bottom of his solid gold coffin. Carter used the hot sun in Egypt to loosen the raisins. For a number of hours, he put the mummy outside in the sun that heated it to 149 degrees Fahrenheit. But it was futile. He stated that the mummy had to be cut from under the limbs and trunk before it was possible to lift the remains of the king. At that time, Carter had no option. Had he not done this, thieves would have attacked the guards and robbed the place to remove the gold. He was of that opinion. The royals believed that they could take their riches with them after death. Hence, King Tut was given abundant jewelry and all of pure gold. To separate Tut from his ornamentation, Carter's men 
Remove the mummy's head and cut off nearly every major joint. They then collected and put the remains of the body in a layer of sand in a wooden box with padding. Lately, the archaeologists have started concentrating less on treasures and more on the details of life and mysteries of death. Moreover, they now have an access to more advanced technology. In 1968, an anatomy professor x-rayed the mummy and it revealed that that's breastbone and front ribs were missing. King Tut's demise was a big event as he was the last of his family lineage. With him came to an end a royal dynasty. But the facts of his death and its consequences are unclear. Amenhotep III, Tut's father or grandfather, was a powerful pharaoh who ruled for almost four decades at the height of the 18th dynasty's golden age. His son Amenhotep IV succeeded him. He promoted the worship of the Aten, the sun disk, changed his name to Akhenaten or servant of the Aten and moved the religious capital from the old city of Thebes to the new city of Akhenaten, known now as Amarna. He shocked the country by attacking Amun a major god, smashing his images and closing his temples. It must have been a terrible time for the people because the family that had ruled for centuries was coming to an end and then Akhenaten had presumably gone a little crazy. After Akhenaten's death, a mysterious ruler named Menkare showed up for a brief period and departed with hardly a sign. It was then that young Tutankhaten took the throne. The boy king soon changed his name to Tutankhamun, living image of Amun, and during his reign, the country witnessed a return of the old ways. He reigned for about nine years and then died suddenly. The Egyptian mummy project has recorded almost 600 mummies so far and is still counting. The next stage is scanning the mummies with a portable CT machine. King Tut is one of the first mummies to be scanned to ascertain the secret of his death. Therefore, the million dollar scanner had stopped functioning because of sand in a cooler fan the guard there looked anxious and said jokingly that it was because of the curse of the pharaoh. Finally, the problem with the scan machine was rectified and the task was completed. Tut was carried back to his tomb in less than three hours after he was removed from his coffin. The scanned images of Tut revealed that nothing Thing had gone seriously wrong. Zahi Hawaz was evidently comforted. The wind had stopped and the winter air was cold and still. Just above the entrance to Tut's tomb stood Orion, the constellation that the ancient Egyptians knew as the soul of Osiris, the god of the afterlife, as if watching. Dot. Thank you.